morning. Welcome to worship this morning. I hope you saw the moon this morning. It was just amazing. Came uh, down over the hill. It was just a beautiful uh, full moon today. Just reminding us of the glorious wonder of God's creation. And what a joy it is that we're able to be here to observe all that God is doing. Again, welcome to worship today. Whether here in person or online, it is a joy and a pleasure to have you here. My name is Mike Sager. I'm one of the pastors here at Desert Hills, along with Pastor Craig Larson. And again, welcome to worship. One of the things that we do every time we gather for worship is we remind ourselves and the world what we believe God is calling us to be about. So I invite you to join with me as we proclaim together our mission statement. Here at Desert Hills Lutheran Church, we celebrate, we make disciples who make a difference. May it be so among us today, and we will celebrate today how we have made a difference this past year through God's working through us. So today, we celebrate that reality. And we celebrate that reality because today uh, is our annual meeting. Uh, we'll be having our annual meeting today at 1230. Uh, there's going to be a light luncheon at 1145. So we invite you to come back, have lunch together, and then prepare for the annual meeting at 1230, which will be in the sanctuary. So just note, note that 1230 annual meeting in the sanctuary. The social cares um, ministry is sponsoring TTT Drive, which means toothpaste toothbrush, and toilet paper. So we invite you to start bringing those items, placing them in the Northwest Hallway. Again, it's a great way for us to uh, provide those resources so those that have struggles trying to get food and other things can uh, be alleviated of that pressure in their lives. I invite you to join the Food, Fun, and Fellowship team. Next weekend is... Super Bowl Sunday. So the, the Super Bowl is going to be taking place. Kickoff is at 4.30. The party begins at 4 o'clock. There'll be food. There'll be trivia. There'll be games. There'll be football. There'll be everything you ever wanted. Uh, next Sunday, starting at 4 o'clock, we invite you to come and, and watch the game. Have some time of fellowship and food and just enjoy the afternoon. We do ask that, uh, invite you to bring a can of food um, that will support to the food drive. That's part of a larger uh, campaign across the country. The women's luncheon is going to be on Monday, February 13th. The last day to purchase those tickets is this Wednesday, February 8th. So note that, please. Also, that same day, the DHLC Foundations Golf Tournament is scheduled. Um, it will begin at 8 a.m. at Torres Blancas Golf Course in Green Valley. That's for anyone that plays golf, thinks about playing golf, seen golf on TV, wonder where golf is. Come, enjoy. Uh, it's a scramble, so you're with other people and you use other people's balls, so it's just a great time to be out in the, in the community and get to know other people. You can sign up in the hallway as you leave uh, the worship space this morning. Also that same week, the men's breakfast is on Thursday, February 16th. The last day to purchase tickets is Tuesday, February 14th, which is Valentine's Day for all the men. If you come get your ticket, make sure that you have something for the ones you love when you go home. So that's February 14th, last day to purchase the tickets for that. And then Dr. Michael Chan uh, from Concordia College will be here on the weekend of the 18th and 19th. Uh, he will be exploring uh, the, the story of Sarah and Abraham and how the three major faith traditions use that story as part of who they are and their understanding of God. Especially those of you that have been in the Bible study on Wednesdays, you know we've been studying Genesis, so you kind of know the story of Abraham and Sarah. This would be a great uh, supplement to that. But for anyone that just wants to hear how that amazing story is used by different faith traditions, uh, I invite you to come. He's an excellent speaker. They are asking you to sign up at the front desk, so that way we just have an awareness of how many people to plan for. So, great week in that. So, that week is just a busy week. Just plan to camp out. Uh, you can eat and, and do everything you ever want to do that week um, of February 14th. Those, as you can see, are the announcements. We have a lot going on. We have more things going on in, uh, uh, on our sheets. So if you don't have um, all that information, you can grab one of the sheets that lists everything. Or you can go to our website, dhlc.org. And again, all the announcements are there as well. So that's our announcements for this week. Join me in prayer. 
Gracious loving God, we are just so grateful for this opportunity to gather here this day, not only in worship, but this afternoon for a time to gather around the table and begin to imagine what you're calling us to be about this new year. Bless us this day as we lift our voices in praise. Let us know that we are welcome here just the way we are. And may we just experience your grace and peace this day. And may we just know your love and grace. And may we just celebrate all the gifts you have given us as a community of faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue with our opening hymn. I invite you to please stand. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Amen. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. all Amen. Peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. strength to live your word and let us pray to the Lord. Help, save and defend us, O God. God, with endless mercy, you receive the prayers of all who call upon you. By your spirit, show us the things we ought to do and give us the grace and power to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Today's first reading is from Ephesians. I therefore, a prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit of the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Today's second reading is for Peter. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speaks must do so as one speaking the very words of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength of that God supplies, so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord. God. May the one who calls us into one faith, one baptism, one body, Bless you this day with God's presence and God's peace. Amen. So are you excited? Are you excited what you just heard that today is a day in which we get to gather as the body of Christ here at Desert Hills Lutheran Church to imagine what God is calling us to do in the year ahead? That's what the annual meeting is about, isn't it? You know, it means about us gathering together and begin to imagine together what God is calling us to be about. How God is calling us to use our gifts and our talents in service of God. In all that we say and in all that we do. So you're excited. I know, it's crazy, isn't it? To think anyone would be excited about an annual meeting. If you ask most pastors, it's probably the most dreaded day of their year. That and taxes. But I want us to reimagine this day. So today we're celebrating what God did through us this past year. To remember how God has been faithful and how God has used us to make a difference, which is what we believe we are called to be about here in this place. And I want us to imagine what God might be doing through us in this year to come. Because community is a gift. Research will tell us that as human beings we are created and called and even hardwired for community. If the pandemic taught us anything... It taught us how difficult it is for us to be isolated. How it overwhelmed us and caused us to be in despair. It took a toll on the young and the not so young. We were all affected because we are created to be in community together. It should not surprise us because oftentimes to punish someone, we isolate them. If that wasn't a punishment, why would we do it? Because we know being isolated, being alone is hard on us. It's hard on what it means to be a human being. And science backs up what scripture proclaims. 
Remember when God looked at Adam and says, it is not good for Adam to be alone. We have always been called to be together in community. Science also tells us those who have a community are healthier both physically, mentally, and spiritually. People who have community recover quicker from injury and accident and are able to handle the grief of life better. Those who have community have a deeper sense of meaning in their lives and they tend to live longer. <laughs> Here at Green Valley, we should be surprised because we have created rec centers, which the whole thing about is to create community. Club after club, opportunity after opportunity for people to gather for varieties of reasons. My guess is most of us here did not grow up here. There are a few, but for most of us, we've come from somewhere else, haven't we? We left behind that community in which we knew to form new communities here. And we seek out where we belong. We need this sense of community. And while the clubs and activities around Green Valley are great and beneficial, those communities cannot offer the one thing that we have here in a Christian community. And that is the promise of hope. That is the promise of God's love and presence. That is the call to be about something greater than ourselves. So many of the other clubs and communities we join is because of liked interests or a common location. Here we are gathered from a variety of places. A variety of understandings. And somehow we come together to be this community of God. Did you hear what the Apostle Paul said to the church at Ephesus? Calling them now to live out this new way of being in the world. And you have to read before Paul gets to that place in Ephesus. If you read earlier in, Ephes in the book of Ephesians, you will discover because Paul reminds them it's because of what God has done for you. Paul says before the creation of the world, God chose you. God chose you to be an instrument of God's redemption in the world. Paul reminds us. It's because of what God is doing through you that you now become the body of Christ. And Paul calls us to live a life worthy of all that God is doing and has done in your life. Christian community is a gift. A gift God gives us so that we can learn how to love and forgive. So we can learn how to get beyond our differences and see our unity in Christ. For we are the body of Christ in this place. With our sisters and brothers in Christ in various places in Green Valley and across the world. We are united in one purpose. And that purpose is to trust and believe in the promises of Jesus Christ for us and for the world. And to live those promises out in our lives. To be blessed, as the choir remind us. To be blessed because we have been called into one faith. This faith in Christ. During our stewardship camp, uh, dinners this year, I invited those of you who were gathered to dream and to pray about what would you hope for Desert Hills in the years to come. And I want to share with you some of what they said. Many of those gathered said, we want this place to continue to be a welcoming community. 
that so many there that were gathered those days said how they felt welcomed when they walked in. How a friend invited them to come and see to belong. And they said that's a core who we are. Remember what our core value is? There's always room for one more. That is a welcoming stance. We don't close our doors. We open our doors. We open our doors and we invite those to come and experience the gift of community. People talked about how they wanted us to continue to look for ways to make a difference in the community. To continue to look for ways to engage what's going on around us so that we can be a beacon of hope. We can be that city on the hill. They wanted us to continue to care for one another. Like we were reminded, we are to love one another. That's our calling. Because we have been loved. And because we believe Jesus loves you, then somehow I'm called to love you as well. As God loves me. The community talked about this need to continue to walk with one another. To provide opportunities to gather and be community together like so much that is happening in the weeks ahead. Those begin to be the dreams of this community, the prayers of this community. And that's really what this gathering is about today and every day. <laughs> is we dream together what God is doing and calling us to be about in this world. To make a difference. To know our lives matter. To see the strength. And blessing of community. Like we were reminded this year, no one walks alone. We trust and believe that God walks with us. Jesus says, I will never abandon you like the world does. I will always be with you. I invite you to think about what other community offers you that. <laughs> what other community can offer you a hope grounded in the promises of of God who created you and knew you before you were born. What other community can offer that strength and wisdom that even in death itself, somehow God is bringing about life? Well, those communities can provide support. They can't provide you hope. Because our hope is found in the promises and love of Jesus. And today I want to celebrate how we've shared that hope with this community, with one another. Today, during the time of gathering of, of offering, we're going to show you a video of some of the places that we have worked together to make a difference. I want to share with you right now a video that was presented at our stewardship din dinners. This is just an excerpt of the Bishop Hutter's thank you to you as a congregation. Because she knows you have made a difference. You have made a difference in the synod. You have made a difference in the world. You have made a difference in our neighborhoods. So I invite you to hear what Bishop Hutter has to say to you today. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. It's good to be with you through the gift of technology. My name is Deborah Hutterer, and I get to serve as the Bishop of the Grand Canyon Synod. I'm here to say thank you and to remind you of the many things that we do together as Synod. I've come to know you as generous people who continue to grow and to be challenged in your faith journey. I've known you to be people of various backgrounds and beliefs, and yet you continue to share the one common desire that people know God, celebrate grace, that they make disciples and make a difference. 
being church together allows us to be places that you can't individually be. Thank you for letting me share this part of your, of your day and to remind you that you are a part of something that's much bigger than just your congregation. As your stewardship theme says, no one walks alone. As Bishop Hutter reminds us, no one walks alone. And we are indeed part of something greater than ourselves, greater than Desert Hills. We are part of the very body of Christ, making a difference in the world and bringing about the redemption of the world. So the day we celebrate, we celebrate how God has used us to make that difference. We celebrate each other and the gift God has given us. Even though we may be different, we are united together in Christ, through Christ, for Christ. And may we remember, may we remember today and the celebration. And whether you can come to the annual meeting, I invite you to pray. I invite you to pray for this community that we would be about the work of God in this place and with each other. And may we always remember, there's always room for one more. Amen. Together, let us affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. During this time of the gathering of offerings, I invite you to watch 
this video just letting us know kind of where some places that we have supported and been a part of here at Desert Hills and how you have made a difference in the lives of so many. Thank you for allowing God to use us, to use you, to make a difference in the lives of so many. Let us give God the praise through our applause of how God used us this year. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need beginning with words from Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Lord, we continue to offer our thanks, prayers, and gifts of time, talent, and treasure for your mission in the world to bring good news, help, and hope for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. New to our prayer list is Carol Stefacek, Judy Andrews, and Tricia Carlson. Leaving the prayer list with thanksgiving for healing is Art Tranby. We take time now to silently pray for those who remain on our prayer list, as well as for others in our hearts and for situations in our lives. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this community of faith. 
While some might think of the church as a place of doors, windows, and walls, we know it as a place where your spirit moves and refreshes our hearts. It is here where lives intersect through your remarkable grace. We can't praise you enough for the unique way you've blended the talents of individuals into beautiful masterpieces of joy. May we love one another to the fullest and be evidence of your ultimate love to advance the work of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. your prayer. God of hope, bind up the brokenhearted and restore to health those who suffer. We remember before you all who are in need of your healing spirit, including those in Ukraine, those who suffered from natural disasters, the bitter cold of winter or the lack of food and shelter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up to you all the ministries of this community. We praise you for the way you have used us to make a difference in the lives of others. Strengthen us to continue to seek and follow your guidance and to trust in your calling in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless us this weekend as we gather together as a community to envision our ministry together in this new year. May we be faithful to our calling and continue to shine your love to the world. Guide and strengthen all the leaders of this community as they help move us forward into your future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. We hear the promise that comes from God, both here in this place and those that are online. As we hear the words, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sin, do this in the remembrance of me. We pray together the prayer which our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ which is broken for you this day. Take and drink. This is the blood of Christ which is shed for you and for our sake. Amen. The invitation is to come. Note that there is gluten-free that's available. The dark color is the wine. The light color is the non-alcoholic grape juice. Come for all is ready.
We have been gathered as the body of Christ and have been fed body and spirit with the bread of life, encouraged, nourished, and strengthened. Let us share the good news of the gospel. As you leave this place, know that you go with a blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand as we sing together. go out as the body of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Amen.